Have I ever mentioned how much I hate daylight savings? I have no idea what day it is, what time it is. Spawn Wave doesn't even know what year it is because he uploaded a video talking about buying a PlayStation 4 in 2023. Bro, it's still 2022. I guess those kids are starting to, you know, put a little wear and tear on the mind. But of course, it's not what you're here to hear about. You are here to hear about video game news and opinions. And that is what we are doing today. Hope everyone's having a great Sunday. We're going to talk about Gran Turismo 7. We're going to talk about light guns potentially coming to the Nintendo Switch, which excites me a lot. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share on the video. We're well on the way to 500,000 subscribers. Please come along for the ride. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. And we're going to start things off with Gran Turismo 7 and sort of all the drama surrounding this. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but I am a huge Gran Turismo fan. Okay, I've been playing Gran Turismo games since Gran Turismo 2. We would use Bleemcast to play it on the Dreamcast because the visuals were better. And I, I love I love the Gran Turismo series, and I'm not a complete idiot like people think I am. I know car stuff, okay? I used to go to car shows, see this picture from like six years ago. I used to win things at car shows, see this picture from like eight years ago. So like, you know, I'm holding the trophies, look, looking pretty good there. So I know my car stuff, and I always appreciate really good automotive simulator games. I'm a big fan of German vehicles. Ooh, the Germans, I'm so scared of the Germans, but like the German vehicles are or what hit with me I, I am a big fan of those so with Gran Turismo 7 I ended up picking it up and there's a lot of drama sort of surrounding this game because of the fact that there are microtransactions and the way that they do them is is kind of predatory and I'm not going to sit here and try to sugarcoat it basically when you play a Gran Turismo game you are constantly getting credits you spend those credits on things like vehicle upgrades and of course buying new vehicles now this is something that's been in every previous Gran Turismo game up until this date and it's still in Gran Turismo 7 it's, it's sort of the basis of why you're doing things like these different races and these different competitions in order to unlock more credits in order to buy more stuff but a lot of people feel like this game is extra predatory in the way that it does it because of the fact that it's constantly reminding you that you can buy credits with with real world money and i'll be real i bought some credits with real world money i spent ten dollars of my money to buy a million credits because my time isn't as you know vast as it used to be when i was you know 14 years old playing gran turismo 2 on the dreamcast or 13 whatever the hell I, age i was you know so i don't have time to sit around and grind all of this stuff but you can do it in the game i think the real problem is there's like special cars in the game that just cost a, a, like insane amounts of credits and it's like can anyone feasibly get enough credits to have those credits in order to buy that car that's like a limited time a limited off vehicle and i think that's where the, the real controversy strikes up but to me it's like yes like you still can play the game of course there are courses you could buy a certain vehicle and do a certain event or race on a certain course and still unlock it all and you know if you do that you know five six times then you have enough credits in order to buy the other vehicle that you want that limited vehicle or that that vehicle that you just want that's available to you and it was the same way in every previous Gran Turismo game you would find the one race that you could exploit and you would just do it over and over again to get a bunch of credits and buy what you want i i feel like you know it, it is a bit predatory like i said because of the fact that it's always thrusting it in your face and it, it you know you had the fear of missing out fomo as it's called and um you know you, you're afraid that you're going to miss out on this vehicle it's a limited time thing and then you're never going to see it again but to me gran turismo 7 has never really been about or gran turismo as a franchise has never really been about collecting every vehicle in the game like sure that that would be cool but it's about finding the vehicles you like finding the vehicles you have nostalgia for finding the vehicles that you're interested in and then playing with those vehicles and then maybe you discover other vehicles as you're grinding and you're like oh wow that looks really cool oh i remember seeing that in a magazine or a poster or something like that so obviously it is a bit more predatory I i'm not giving the game a pass on that just because of the fact that it's thrust in your face all the time and yeah it can feel a bit like a games as a service because of the fact that you can buy those credits and there is that fear of fomo but to me it's just like it's still a really 
freaking good ass game i'm having so much fun playing it because this is my kind of challenging you know what i'm saying there's people that are like oh you're you're a bitch because you you suck at elden ring and you don't like it you know it's not that i don't like it it's just not my style of game it's not my style of difficulty i would rather play gran turismo 7 and have to like focus in on this race and be perfect in order to win this race and one little flub will mess the whole thing up because you can't rewind anything like that's my idea of a challenge that that's this kind of challenge i like in a game so i'm gonna say gran turismo 7 is worth every penny you know to me i've been having so much fun with this game i've been playing it for at least like 20 plus hours playing online doing all sorts of stuff there's a lot of new stuff added in the game as well I would say don't worry so much about the predatory stuff because it's probably not even going to affect you it's it's something that you kind of have to go out of your way in my opinion to find the drama than letting the drama come to you and if that's the case then is it really that big of a deal at the end of the day you know it, it really depends on the player but for me i'm loving gran turismo 7 baby let's go and finally one of my most anticipated games of 2022 is of course house of the dead remake jesus christ i am so I am so excited for this game. It comes out at the beginning of April. I, ugh, I, I'm just such a House of the Dead fan. You know, I fell in love with the game at the arcade when I was a kid and like some older Asian kid came up and was like, can I play with you? And I was like, yeah, sure. And like he picked up the gun and was like doing the paintball thing where he was like tapping it. And he became my sensei because he was teaching me how to play the game properly. And I was like, this is the greatest thing in the world. He was probably like 16, 18, something like that. I was like 10 or 11. I was like, this guy is amazing and if you're watching this video because you still play video games thank you thank you for putting me on house of the dead but of course the remake is coming to the nintendo switch taking the original game and sort of redoing it you know making it look like a modern game the only home release that we've ever gotten of house of the dead one was available on pc which nobody was playing at that time and of course the sega saturn which was a bit of a gimp down version but it seems like there's something else happening with house of the dead because a brand new physical edition which ordered instantly off of Amazon was announced last night. This was a game that we weren't sure if it was going to get a physical or not, but it is indeed getting a physical and in the physical listing, there's something very interesting. All right. So here's the physical edition of the game, the house of the dead remake limited dead edition. Oh, I like that. That's, that's very punny, but you get an exclusive box with a lenticular outside. Like, look at that dude. That looks so, that looks so good. That looks so cool. You get two character stands from two different of the zombies in the game that you encounter. Of course, the iconic chainsaw guy, you get some stickers and you get the game itself. And if you look at the case of the game itself, definitely harkens back to the original house of the dead. It looks a lot like the house of the dead game that we got released on the Sega Saturn, that beautiful long box which I don't own anymore. I just have the Japanese edition, but this is all very cool. I obviously ordered this already. It's $39.99. It's on Amazon right now. But when you go to Amazon, there's something very interesting about the listing. All right, so here's the listing for the game. As you can see, $39.99. This is the game we just talked about, the Limited Dead Edition. Limited Dead Edition right on there. Limited Dead Edition includes exclusive lenticular, two character stands, and a sticker sheet, which we just saw. The complete remake, visual audio mechanics, and new game modes of the iconic shooting game released in arcades in 1996. Obviously, this game, I don't score games, but it's a 10 out of 10. I don't care. Don't watch my video on it when it comes out unless you want to see a fanboy fanboying, unless it's just absolutely terrible. Player alone or with a friend with using joy cons or a gun wait a second here a gun obviously a frantic action that never stops an entire bestiary of characters to unlock and learn more about their weaknesses very cool about that but wait a minute here a gun now this listing is obviously done by the company themselves because everything that's in this listing we've already established as as, as real as, as happening god this game looks so good but this is all real you know the limited edition includes a lenticular box two character stands and a sticker sheet so what is this about a gun now, if you know anything about the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, you would know that the right one actually has an infrared sensor on the bottom of this. There have been a few games that have sort of utilized this for, you know, on-screen pointing. I know a lot of third-party games that were ported that were Wii games, like the Blob and stuff, have stuff like that. And it actually works really good. So, I was under the impression that I was going to be using this Joy-Con as sort of my light gun. And, you know, just going around the map and, you know, shooting the zombies in it. But a gun that's where things get very interesting because it could go one of two ways you could just make an apparatus for this that you holster it in and it essentially becomes a gun and i think that would be fine i think people would be happy with that you know you don't need something completely different or it could indeed be like a light gun 
like making a light gun using the technology within this you know maybe using the ir sensor or using something similar to replicate a light gun experience now of course the nintendo wii had a ton of great light gun games because you had the sensor bar right on top of the tv whether we're talking about the house of the dead 2 and 3 collection ghost squad resident evil umbrella chronicles 1 and 2 like there were so many awesome games to this and i am someone who loves light gun games because it's still something that you don't get that experience at home still to this day because of the fact that we have hd televisions that work differently than the crt television so for them to put gun for them to put a gun in the thing it's like wait a minute now rgt's got a gun dun, dun, dun. rgt's got a gun like are you giving me a light gun for the nintendo switch if so port all those wii u games over i don't need just just put a little sheen on the graphics i want to play ghost squad i want to play house of the dead 2 and 3 i want to play resident evil umbrella chronicles so to me it does seem like light guns in some capacity are coming to the nintendo switch now whether it's just a holster for this or a full-on light gun i don't give a shit give me this companies i know there are third-party companies that watch my videos because you tell me you watch my videos and you want to give me some products that i'm not interested in this i'm interested in the streets want this we want light guns and light gun games to start to become prevalent on the nintendo switch let's make it happen folks let's make it happen Alrighty, so that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to give me your feedback in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. We're well, on the way to 500,000 subscribers. And yeah, it's pretty much just for my ego, so I can stroke it a little bit in privacy. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.